request. I'm getting some close-ups and I understand what some of the comments were made and I do appreciate the fact that yes I need to get more close-ups but um, at the moment I haven't learned the uh, editing program so I can do such but uh, this will give you the idea now this is right here this portion here is the valve and like I mentioned in the in the other uh, video that the Pensy requested that the linkage and whatnot be on the back side of the, of the gear. Usually it's on the front side here with the uh, crosshead drop link which is on the back here. I'll show that in a minute on this side and the um, activating rod off the quadrant coming off of this side. But the Pensy wanted it, I guess, I guess because it allowed this rod to be closer to the boiler so that's why they did it who knows but anyway I did that also to make it make it to match what the Pensy had and you can see here now as I open this it, it opens and closes the valve and that's of course in the middle and what happens is when you open this this I don't know if I can move it but as I move this you can see the valve start as I'm, I'm moving the, the cross head now with my finger and that's centering the valve and I'll move it again or I'll move it back and as I as I move this you can see if you watch the valve up there I'm moving the cross head back and that valve is centering itself it's coming back towards neutral and then once it reaches the center it stops now the, the more you move this the, as, you, as you follow the movement of the, the uh, cross head if you follow the movement of the cross head with with your uh, fingers pushing on the on the uh, Johnson bar which is up here as you move that then what happens is the cross head starts to move forward in the same direction at the same speed as you move the quadrant lever which gives it a nice scale movement now you gotta remember the prototypes obviously ran on air but you're picking up tons of weight we're not picking up too much we're not moving too much weight with the valve gear very very light I don't think the whole entire valve gear probably weighs less than 10 pounds not even maybe maybe five pounds it's very light so it's not uh, it's just for the fact that it's just for the um, we do it just for the um, for the effect and uh, this is the uh, plate that I mentioned it's a, a copper etched plate that I made up now I'll cover that in a different video and again here's a close-up of the quadrant it, the, the, the part up here this part right here is spring-loaded and then it moves along there and, it, and there's a segment of the gear inside here that meshes with the gear teeth here to hold it now on the prototype these were square notches this is what they say a notch notching it up but I wasn't going to go through all the trouble of making the little notches I just happened to have a, a big clock gear that someone gave me and I cut a segment out of it and used that as the as the quadrant which works fine um, this is the feed now the valve, I'm going to cut that in a minute, I'll show you that in a minute, is underneath this cap. And this is the valve body here that's bolted down and then the passageways go to one side. In fact, you can see this little bump here, that's where the, the passageway cuts through that and, and drilled through that into this side of the piston and then one on this side of the piston, they're connected to this valve. The, the uh, feed comes in from the center. And the exhaust goes out through the, through the back side of the valve, which will be explained in, in the next portion of this uh, video. So um, that's uh, the close-up, which was requested. And um, uh, now the next phase is I'm going to show you the actual working of the valve. Okay, I'm going to attempt to get some close-ups of the valve bodies. Now this is where are we at? this is the valve body here. Let's see if I can get focus on it. Okay, great. And you can see that let me see if I get something to point with. That um, this area right here is where the valve rides. It's a half an inch in diameter and I this one has been lapped with some lapping compound. Uh, and that's very important to get the valve to seat. This hole here is connected to the exhaust here. Where are we at? 
this is kind of tough to do so just bear with me guys there we go and this hole here is connected to the exhaust and these this hole and this hole is cross drilled to the holes on the bottom which correspond to the holes in the um, cylinder. Okay, now for the valve part, let's see if we can get this to show. Now this valve, this is the valve that was um, the scrapped one. As you can see, whoever machined this, guess didn't have a rotary table, but they tried to grind this area here to get a radius port which ma matches to the two holes and then the other one so what happens is I'm going to do it on this other valve because this, this is the one that he made whoever did he made the, the shaft too small so let's see if we can do this um, okay when the valve opens this rotates and you can see that that the hole here is just corresponds to the hole in the body and if you think about it the radius hole matches the other two holes inside and allows the the water to come through and pass through down into the exhaust and out so the pressure coming in here the pressure coming in goes through that hole down into the cylinder pushes the piston and then the piston moving the other way pushes the, the exhaust out of the the discharge water out and then out the valve and then over to the this is really tough to do guys but we're doing the best I can um, so you can get an idea how that works now I don't know if um, this is going to help you much but it does give a, a little bit better idea of how, how it actually works and this is um, pretty much as the prototype. Now if I mention what I mentioned on the um, video about the leakage on the shaft, this hole, the center shaft hole, is 530 seconds in diameter. The best that you can make that is a very close fit half a thousandths to a one thousand smaller, no more. Even a thousandths is too small. And I generally lap that in so it's tight as I can possibly make it. Uh, if you if you try to put a seal something on the front end here, um, I've tried all of that. It, uh, it it causes the valve to hang up and it's a little stiff, and it doesn't work as smoothly. So the smooth operation is more important. Uh, if it drips a little bit there, I can put a catch or something to catch the the dripping and then discharge it uh, in a safe place so it's not dripping on top of the drivers or someplace uh, on the rail head or who knows what. Um, okay that pretty much covers the valve and uh, if there's any other questions uh, I'll try to cover them as well so just ask me the questions and we'll see what I can do